The B vitamins are a group of important vitamins that exist naturally in foods. In this video, I want to talk about what vitamin B is, its roles in the body, and how to get enough of it, which means we will talk about vitamin B supplementation at the end of the video. Let's start by discussing what vitamin B is and why we need it. Vitamin B isn't actually one single vitamin, but instead a group of nutrients that perform similar functions in the body. In total, there are eight B vitamins. B1, also called thiamine, B2, also called riboflavin, B3, called niacin, B5, called pantothenic acid, B6, called pyridoxine, B7, called biotin, B9, called folate, and B12, called cobalamin. Some people also add vitamin B-like nutrients to this list. They can act as cofactors and include choline, sometimes also called vitamin B4, and asotol, sometimes also called vitamin B8, PABA, aka vitamin B10, or betaine. The B vitamins are essential dietary nutrients, meaning we need to get them from food and cannot produce them ourselves. They are generally water-soluble, meaning they don't accumulate in fat tissue and any excess is peed out. However, certain derivatives of the B vitamins, for example, benfotiamine, which is a derivative of vitamin B1, can be fat soluble. Here is a list of the different RDAs for each B vitamin. Like I said before, the B vitamins have several different functions in the body. It will be impossible to list all of them here, but the main ones are 1. Energy production. While B vitamins don't provide energy themselves, none of the vitamins do by the way, they are needed to help the body use other nutrients for energy. That's because the conversion of food into energy requires certain enzymes, which in turn need B vitamins to function properly. Some examples include vitamin B1, which helps the body use glucose as energy by supporting ATP synthesis, vitamin B6, which helps release stored glucose from the liver to make it available for the muscles, and vitamin B12, which is needed in all kinds of energy-related processes, such as fat and protein breakdown and red blood cell production. Next, we have cognitive health. Another important role of the B vitamins is to make sure your brain functions properly. In fact, all of them play a critical role in brain function, from manufacturing neurotransmitters to regulating energy release and brain cells. For example, the active form of vitamin B6 called P5P is required to convert tryptophan, an amino acid that you get from protein in your diet, into functional serotonin. So a deficiency in vitamin B6 will lead to lower the normal serotonin levels, which as you know is critical to mental well-being. Very low protein intakes as well as pyroluria can lead to chronically low B6 levels and in turn can cause all the nasty side effects associated with low serotonin. And third, we have overall metabolism. B vitamins are critical to a well-functioning metabolism. Now, since your metabolism's role is to turn food into energy, you could say that this role is the same as that of energy production, which I mentioned a second ago. However, B vitamins are involved not only in the production of energy, but in pretty much every step along the way. For example, B1 helps regulate appetite, and without B3, your body won't be able to handle fats and sugars properly. B6 helps digest proteins, and B7 helps you produce cholesterol. Really, a better name for B vitamins would be to call them cofactor vitamins, because they're involved in so many bodily processes that you really can't do without them. Let's now talk about high vitamin B foods and its best sources. In general, animal proteins will be your best source, with things such as meat, especially liver, seafood, eggs, and dairy at the top of the list. Plant-based vitamin B foods include soy products, certain nuts, and brewers or nutritional yeast. However, specific B vitamins, such as B12, are fairly low in almost all plant foods, so vegans are usually recommended to supplement. This then takes me to supplementation. In general, you have two options when wanting to supplement, natural and synthetic B vitamin supplements. Natural supplements include the before-mentioned brewer's yeast or nutritional yeast. 
Nutritional yeast, for example, is produced by growing a yeast in glucose, so sugar, for several days. When the yeast is ready, it is deactivated with heat. The pros of natural vitamin B supplements are that they are easier on the body and usually better absorbed. The cons are that the dosage is too low for some people to notice an effect and that yeast-based supplements can cause problems in people with candida. Synthetic B vitamin supplements, on the other hand, are usually made in a lab, where the goal is to best duplicate the structure of the isolated vitamin using and combining different substances. Its pros are that you can achieve much higher doses than natural supplements, you can increase metabolism more effectively than natural supplements, and you can create activated B supplements. That's because the B vitamins need certain other nutrients to become active in the body. For example, vitamin B6 requires zinc and magnesium to be turned into P5P, which I said before is the active form of vitamin B6. The cons are that the supplements are made in a lab, after all, that's why they're synthetic, and that they can be too strong for some people, usually because they have so much higher doses than natural vitamin B supplements. With these pros and cons in front of us, what should you go with and what's the ideal dose? I suggest you start with a low-dose natural vitamin B supplement and see how your body reacts. Their dose is usually slightly above your RDA, so it's the same as if you ate a good amount of vitamin B foods. If you don't notice any side effects, next you can try a low-dose synthetic B complex, and after that, if you still want to up your intake, you can try a high-dose synthetic B complex and or an activated B complex. They are sometimes also known as methylated B complexes. People with methylation issues should usually go directly with an active B vitamin supplement because their bodies have a hard time doing this conversion properly. Both high dose vitamin B supplements along with activated vitamin B supplements contain much more than the RDA, sometimes more than tenfold. Since vitamin B is water soluble, this usually isn't a problem, but in rare cases it can be. That's because B vitamins upregulate certain metabolic pathways, such as phase 1 detoxification, which converts toxic chemicals into a less harmful chemical. Even though you want this process to happen, if it happens too quickly, for example from large doses of vitamin B supplements, other harmful compounds and free radicals are produced as byproducts. If your body isn't able to eliminate them fast enough, they build up in the body and will cause problems. That's why I generally tell people to go slow with B vitamins, especially if you think you have a high toxin load, for example, from too much estrogen or heavy metals. As you can see, it's a complex topic. So as always, please do your research and talk to an expert before superdosing any supplement.